What's up everybody, JJ here. Today we're going to be building the smallest keyboard I've ever seen. This is the MechBoards Pocket Type. This is finally a keyboard that can actually fit in your pocket. If you scroll around the Mechanical Keyboard subreddit for long enough, you realize keyboards get smaller and smaller the farther you get into the hobby. First you start off with a full-size board, then you might step down to something like this, smaller, but still has a lot of keys on here. Then you get your 60% boards. You cut off the 10 key over on the side, you cut off the function rows up top, much smaller keyboard, Still all the functionality, it's just layered in there. And then you might take it even smaller. This keyboard only has seven keys that aren't letter keys. So we only have six modifiers to layer underneath these, all the functions and numbers and F keys. Everything you need is still here. It's just harder to get to. But this is next level. This is a pocket keyboard you could take anywhere. Anywhere you may be that needs a tiny keyboard, you're ready to go. First things first, if you're following the directions on their website, you will notice they do recommend flashing your microcontroller first before you try to solder it together. That's something I have had issues before. A, I think the microcontroller was just bad. And I soldered, hand soldered up an entire board, had it all in there, and then I couldn't get it to flash. I thought maybe I'd soldered something wrong, went back through and tried everything, tried the software, tried reloading software, and turns out the controller was bad. I removed the controller and it on its own couldn't flash firmware, so I had to throw that one out. Because these can go bad after a while, so you do want to make sure to try flashing it first. I did use the QMK Toolbox, and it works really well. Super smooth, super easy to do. But then with step two, I am going to change what they say to do next. I would do the diodes second. This is something I learned from professional solderers. I worked at an electronics company and worked on full-time soldering for several weeks. Learned all the tips and tricks of professional solderers that solder 40 hours a week every week. When you're building up a board with all your components, we're going to have diodes on here. We've got some resistors, LEDs. We've got some switches we're going to put on here if I don't throw them everywhere. But basically when you're building up a board, you want to start with the shortest component first. You can put them in here, turn the board over, lay them flat, and then solder them all on. So since diodes are the shortest of these components, we're going to start with the diodes, put them all in, lay them flat, flip the board over, solder them all in, then we're going to move up to resistors, then LEDs, and then switches, since switches are almost the tallest thing on here. And then the microcontroller will be the last thing we put on here. That's just how I'm going to do it, different from how they recommend doing it. Either way, it's going to work, but I think this way might get you a better looking board at the end. And then after all that, then you screw on these, It's a there's a base plate to it, and then a top plate that covers the diodes. It's going to make it look really good in the end. Also, it's great, these little keycaps that come with it, they're just tiny little plastic white things that you can paint whatever you want on there or use a little Sharpie or felt tip marker, whatever you want to sort of write your legend on there or draw a picture, whatever you want, however difficult you want it to make typing. It's all up to you, which I love about the hobby of keyboards because you can make it however you want. So let's get right into that building montage. You can go through, slide them all into these holes. Make sure you put the black line on the bottom. So it's a little, this little symbol have an arrow, have an arrow pointing down and then a flat line. And so the flat line on the diode should be where the flat line on that arrow was. And then after you're, they're all here, you're going to want to flip them over. I'm going to use a plate, hold them all in place, flip it over. Now solder all of these joints together and they'll all look perfect on the other side since you can lay them flat like this. And we're back with the fully completed mech board here. I did write the legend on here with just a Sharpie, as you can see there. I just used the back end, so it's sort of a fine tip, fine felt tip point to a Sharpie. Not this other side, this would be too large. Hard to get very fine detail on there. Unless you just have really good handwriting, this worked for me really well. I do kind of like that it's not a permanent solution, so you can write on here. If I don't like it, if I rubbed on it hard enough or used some rubbing alcohol or probably just water, 
would work with a little bit of rubbing. I could clear them off and reset them however I want. I found I really enjoy using this keyboard a lot more than I thought. I found a lot more uses than I originally thought. One for me specifically is when I'm working from home here, I've got my work laptop and my main computer going. And so this I can connect to my main computer to be able to enter a couple words occasionally if I'm doing a YouTube search to play a different video or something. I can have this one off to the side if I'm not going to be writing emails or writing a bunch of words. If I was going to write a long paragraph, I would switch my main keyboard over. But for simple web searches or other things like that where I'm entering a couple words at most, this keyboard works really well. This allows me to have two full keyboards at my desk at the same time without taking up a ton of space. But another big use for this that I've noticed is since you can fit it right next to your main keyboard without taking a bunch of space, you could easily use this as, as a macro pad that fits right next to your key and gives you a ton of key input options. So if you're a streamer or video editor or, or whatever software you're using a lot, if there are macro inputs where you're using control and buttons, it's super easy on here to have a sort of macro pad. You could map them out to make each button be a different command for you, like copy, paste, cut, whatever you use for Photoshop or Lightroom. I have my own special little board for DaVinci Resolve. Subscribe below so you don't miss the video on this one. But if I didn't have this, I would definitely hook this one up and input those commands in there. But apart from the usefulness of this board, it's also a beautiful little board. I love how tiny it is, how small it is. You could use this on so many little projects when I'm programming with like a Raspberry Pi on my 3D printer or something, and I need to input a couple of text commands. It'd be super easy to take this wherever I need it, plug it in, type in the few commands I need. Super useful for tinkering. But apart from it being actually useful, it's also a great display piece. It looks good. It really does fit in your pocket. And it's a great chance to practice your soldering. So each of all these solder points on the bottom, that's a ton of practice you get to be able to solder each little joint in there. So if you're maybe new to soldering, your first ones might be bad, but by the time you make it to the other side of the board, you're gonna be such a better solderer than the beginning. If you really focus on making nice even solder joints and putting the same amount of solder on each joint as you solder along, it might be worth it just for that solder practice. But that about wraps it up. Enjoyed this way more than I thought it was, and I thought I was gonna enjoy it a good amount. So let's end this video out with a little typing test. Enjoy.